Okay, how is everyone doing? This is Royal with Paternity University. I am the owner of Assurance DNA, a paternity testing service based in Texas, but hey, we can test nationwide, all right? So uh, this is a, a Q&A and a webinar uh, to where you can ask me any question you want about paternity testing, all right? Um, you can ask any question you want, you can bring up any ideas that you may have, but I'm just going to talk about what DNA testing is, how to get into the business, um, and the importance of DNA testing. So DNA testing is, um, it is basically testing the biological relationship between a father, an alleged father, and a child, okay? So uh, when someone needs, you know, there, there's DNA testing for multiple reasons. There's legal reasons or it's peace of mind reasons. When it's legal reasons, it's for something like child custody or to try to get your name off of a birth certificate. Um, it is for inheritance, social security, military benefits. It's for divorce because uh, when you divorce, you get, get a paternity test uh, to prove that is the child if you want to go for child custody. Um, so it's a multitude of legal reasons as to why people get paternity tests. And then there's also the uh, peace of mind reason. Someone may have just had questions for years and years and years, and they finally just want to know if, you know, that's their child, you know, or their grandchild or their brother is not also, you know, only just solely uh, for um, the father only. Okay. So that's the reason, you know, those are the different types or different reasons why someone would get a paternity test. There's lots of different types of relationship tests. You have the regular paternity, you have grandparentage, when the father is either unavailable or deceased or doesn't want to test. So that is testing the grandparents of the alleged father. You have siblingship tests, same thing. If the father is not available or deceased, or the siblings just want to test each other to see if they have the same father. So the siblings are here and they're trying to see if they have the same father. That's a siblingship test. Um, you have maternity tests. Some people may have had absent mothers and they want to prove to see uh, if that mother is truly their mother. Um, you have twin, uh, twin tests, zygosity tests. Uh, you have avuncular tests, which is proving to see if somebody is their aunt or uncle. So, and you have prenatal paternity tests that is testing when the woman is still pregnant. Yep, there is a way that you can do that. So there's all types of different tests and each of those tests are essentially a different uh, source of income or a different income stream for your business when you set it up. So it's really interesting stuff if you, if you really think about it. Um, is it something that's always going to be in need? Yeah, paternity testing, I strongly believe, is always going to be in need, okay? You're always going to need a, type, a different type of a paternity test, whether it's for legal reasons or personal reasons. This industry isn't really going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, there may be science that may make some of the testing easier, but it's not going to just go to a grinding halt. Um, so... That's why I think it's a good idea to get into this business. You know, it's a really good idea to get into the business and to learn how to start and grow and operate your business. Uh, so how do you start your own paternity testing business? You know, what do you need to start? Do you need $10,000 to start a DNA testing business? Do you need to buy a lab? You know, is there any need to do that? Uh, do you have to get a building? Do you have to lease a building? Do you have to get a bunch of medical equipment and, and, and laboratory equipment? Nope, you don't. I tell you what, this is you know the only thing that you need here. There you go. You see my cell phone uh, in the focus. That's, this is it. That and, and maybe a computer are the only things that you need uh, to start your own DNA testing company and to manage it. Is that your, your cell phone, some software um, you know, that you use every day or, or that you receive every day? So you, you know, you probably receive invoices via Stripe or Square. There's all types of software uh, that we use to manage your DNA testing company. So you don't need that. So, you know, why don't you need to get a building? You don't have to. You could rent an office in a co working space if you want to. Um, if you want to keep your expenses low, that's fine. So, most co working spaces only charge four or $500 a month or so to rent a space. That's actually not bad. 
Um, or you can get with a co-working space to see if you could rent a room for an hour to do your DNA test. The DNA test only lasts 15 minutes. So unless you're bringing in an extremely high volume of DNA tests per day, you don't really need an office. Um, so how do, how do you get started? What's the, what's the route to actually get started with your DNA testing company? Uh, well, the way to do it, uh, first off, is to determine the need for DNA testing in your city. You can go to Google Trends and, and type in, you know, DNA test near me or different DNA testing um, search terms, and you can determine what people are looking for on Google. You want to start your doing your market research. Uh, that's a very big thing. So you want to Google and see if there's any other DNA testing companies in your area. There might not be, and that was probably for a good reason. That could probably help because you could be the first one. Okay, so you want to call around and see what type of services they offer, how much they charge, uh, what type of test uh, do they offer. I, I just said that, but, um, you know, what their process is. Does it seem like it's extremely difficult? And I go into this in the course where you can learn this information. Um, another really important thing uh, that, that you can that you should think of is that, you know, a lot of people get hung up on naming their business or, you know, finding a domain name. So for DNA testing. I didn't mind Assurance DNA because at the time I was thinking of something, you know, new and different uh, and a little bit of pizzazz, but you don't really have to do that, you know, when you name your business. Uh, I, I personally, I think the best, one of the best things to do is to name your business after your city or, or the area that you're at uh, and then plus DNA services. So if you are, if you are in Oakland, Oakland DNA services, Oakland paternity services, you know, um, Philadelphia uh, DNA testing services, something like that, because people Google DNA testing in Philadelphia, paternity testing in Philadelphia, paternity testing near me, uh, non-invasive prenatal paternity testing in Philadelphia. They use that. So, you know, make yourself Googleable. You know, that's the word that I like to use. Make yourself Googleable. Um, that makes life a little bit easier. You know, you can you can start getting some of that organic search traffic after a while. Um, you know, I go into the course on how exactly to kind of set up your business. Uh, so definitely, you know, get the course if you want to learn more than information. Um, so how, you know, how is a DNA test done? You know, how, how, you know, do you have to, uh, take blood from somebody? It depends. It depends on the type of DNA test that you're doing. If you're doing a prenatal paternity test, which is a paternity test when a woman is pregnant, um, that is when you draw blood from the woman's arm. Okay. And you only do that if you're a licensed phlebotomist, which means somebody licensed to draw blood. So does that mean that you can't draw blood or you can't do that paternity test at all? Does that mean that you can't make that money? No, you send that person, you send that client uh, to a licensed phlebotomist. Um, there are plenty in your city where you're at and there's ways to find it. And I go into that in the course. Um, you find a licensed phlebotomist, they will charge you as the DNA testing agency owner a collection fee, which is usually like 25 to 50 bucks tops. They will draw the blood for you, do the test. They will have the testing materials there when you give it to them, or they may have it already there. And they'll mail off the samples to the lab, you know, the lab that you're going to be partnered with. Um, so the, also, you know, what, you know, you know, all you are, if you become a DNA testing agency owner, is the middleman. That's it. You're you're the person in the middle. You're it's, it's the client, and then it's you, and then uh, over here, my, my camera slipped a little bit. Then it's the laboratory. The laboratory is uh, who you're partnered with to actually test the samples. Okay, you don't have the ability to test the samples. You don't have the technology and the equipment to do that. All you're doing is when the client calls because they want a paternity test, they're calling you, you do the actual swabbing or you outsource the swabbing. And then you or whoever, whoever you outsource the swabbing to sends the sample to the laboratory that you're partnered with, which I go into in the course on how to partner with the laboratory and they test the samples, okay? They run it through uh, uh, multiple levels of testing, 20 to 24 genetic markers and then they release the results to you or directly to the client. That's what it is. So you're the middleman. You don't, you don't need any fancy technology or medical equipment that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is corner your market in your city. So uh, what makes a good paternity testing service? Now this is, I'm gonna have to drink water for this one. 
what makes a good paternity testing service or what makes a good DNA testing agency owner? So I had two tests today, okay? Uh, we were able to go out and do two mobile DNA tests. And I, I discussed that as well in the course on how to do mobile DNA testing. And what makes a good DNA testing agency owner is number one, answering your phone, answering your phone, okay? Uh, number two, uh, just communication in general. Communicate with the client. Um, put yourself in their shoes. Listen to them. Listen to their needs. Okay. Another thing that makes you good is being open on the weekends. Now, that doesn't mean that, like I said, you have to rent an office and have an office and be paying this and be in the office on weekends, but answer your calls in the week. Answer your phones on the weekend. The reason why is because I looked it up in my city. Uh, I am the only DNA testing company that's pretty much open on the weekends. Okay. I think there's one other maybe, but they're not mobile. They don't go to the client. The client has to go to them. I, I can go to the client or meet the client somewhere and do a DNA test. It's not that difficult. So that's how you set yourself apart. And that's how you set yourself up to do well is to, is to answer your phone communicate actively, you know, especially when you, when you finally get that client and they pay you and you do the test and you send the samples off, send them the FedEx tracking number. Let them know that the samples have been received at the laboratory. Let them know that when their samples are ready, don't just send it off and don't say anything until they call you back. Actively communicate, proactively, you know. Um, be available on weekends on Saturdays and Sundays, charge an extra fee on weekends, fine. You know, if you wanna do that, charge an extra fee or charge a travel fee if you're traveling to them within a certain radius, but, you know, be, be open, you know, have a professional email address. I talk about that in the course as well. Things like that will set you apart because a lot of DNA testing companies suck. Like the individual ones um, that are not franchises, they suck. So you can set yourself apart by being a good business owner, okay? Um, so what are the average prices of, of the D, the different DNA testing services that you can offer? All right. Like I said, there's multiple streams of income. Okay. In, in the DNA testing business because of the multiple services that you can offer. So, uh, one is the standard legal paternity test. Okay. That's alleged father, child or alleged father, mother, and child. Okay. You can charge between 300 and 500 bucks for that, depending on where you're at. That's why I say do your research, call around and determine, you know, what the other DNA testing companies are charging for in your area. OK, starting off, you may want to offer a lower price so you can get that sales volume up. So that's a standard legal paternity test. Legal meaning it is court admissible. You can use it for court or legal proceedings for an informational paternity test, which is a kit, which means, you know, you don't you don't. You don't touch the client. You don't do the actual swabbing. They do their own swabbing. You can either witness it or you can send them a kit and they swab themselves and send it to the lab. Uh, that is from anywhere between 200, about one, 179 to like 249 is the absolute tops for a home informational paternity test kit, okay? You're not gonna charge much higher than that for that. For a non-invasive prenatal paternity test, you can charge between $1,200 and $1,800 for a non-invasive prenatal. The reason why is because the labs charge you um, a, a high, it's a higher ticket item. The, the labs charge you uh, $850 or $1,200, uh, depending on the type of test that you're offering. Uh, so that's a little bit of a caveat, by the way. So uh, part of the startup cost is you actually don't have to pay for supplies up front in the DNA testing business. At minimum, you'll pay for shipping when the labs ship the DNA test to you, okay, that you're going to actually use to swab the client. You pay on the back end. So when you ship the samples in, that when you've used those materials, you ship the samples into the lab and the lab says, okay, great, um, you know, we're going to take payment right now uh, or we are going to, um, you know, charge you by the way. How you doing, Lex? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, thank you for dialing in. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the Q&A uh, if you have any, any questions. Um, and I'll answer any question that you want. So there's a chat box at the bottom, uh, Q&A box. If you have any questions, add them in, okay? Uh, so um, labs don't charge you up front 
for DNA testing supplies. So that really lowers your cost of starting your DNA testing company because you don't have to buy supplies. The labs provide it for you and they send it to you. At most, they charge you shipping, okay? Um, and they may not even charge you shipping up front. They may charge you the shipping when you actually drop the samples off at the UPS or FedEx, okay? Uh, that's, that's at most of what will happen, okay? Um, so going back to the different prices you can charge for DNA testing, uh, DNA testing services, like I said, uh, prenatals, you can charge between $1,200 and $1,800. That's because it's a non-invasive test. Um, the technology is, is relatively advanced and it's just a simple blood draw from the mom's arm and a mouth swab from the father. So the other type of prenatal test is the invasive and that is where uh, a OBGYN inserts uh, a needle into the amniotic sac, so inserts a needle into the woman's abdomen or inserts a um, catheter into the cervix to collect placental samples, okay? So that's how that goes and that's the invasive test and that could possibly uh, hurt the mother or the baby or cause a miscarriage, okay? So a lot of people choose to do the non-invasive and they will pay a higher fee for that. You can charge between twelve and eighteen hundred dollars, and what you do with that is that you uh, send them to a local phlebotomist. That is somebody licensed to draw blood. Uh, they will perform that test for you. Uh, they may also swab the alleged father's mouth, and they will use your kit to send it off to the laboratory, and then you go from there. I've done uh, when I was in the Bahamas uh, recently, about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, I actually coordinated a prenatal paternity test for a woman that was um, in New Jersey, okay? And I never saw her, never met her, only spoke to her on the phone a couple of times to make sure that everything was coordinated. Then I still made $1,600 from that. Now, that was the gross. I paid, the lab charged me $1,200 on the back end, but shoot, profiting um, uh, $400 is not bad for you know, only a couple of phone calls and some emails, okay, and just court, coordinating some stuff. So, you know, consider that. Okay, so um, can you scale your DNA testing company? Is there any limits? You know, is, is the state of whatever that, that you're at, is the city uh, not going to allow you to scale? Uh, does the test have to be consensual for both parents? That is actually a really, really good question. So uh, if the alleged father, if it's just the alleged father and he wants to bring the child in to do a DNA test, he has the right to do that, okay? Uh, if he just wants to bring the child in to get a DNA test because he has a feeling that um, that child may not be his, he has the right to do that and does not have to have the mother's consent. Now, what he does have to have the mother's consent for, and that's between them, okay? It depends on your state, is if the mother has sole custody of the child and he needs to get the child to go do the DNA test, when he, he needs to have the mom's consent for that, like, and that's between them. Uh, but if he wants to bring in the child and has a uh, legal guardianship of that child, or he just feels as though he wants a paternity test and it's uh, either fine with the mother, uh, sometimes the mother may not know, but he, can, he has the right to get a paternity test. That's part of his right to do so. So really good question, Lex, I appreciate that. Um, that is actually something that I, I, I worked on uh, today, um, dealing with a DNA test for that. Um, does the child actually have to be present? Yeah, the child has to be present uh, for the DNA test. So it, 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 it depends. The child has to be tested, but the child does not always have to be present at that very moment. You can set up separate appointments. So a uh, perfect example, I did a DNA test this past Monday where uh, the uh, mother and father were at, at, at odds. And so she brought the child in at you know 30 minutes prior and left, and then he came in later. But regardless, the child and the alleged father, if you're gonna do a paternity test, like testing the father, they have to be pre present to test. They may not be present at the exact same time, but they have to test. All right, another really good question. Thank you, Lex, I appreciate that. Uh, you could be sued for sure. Uh, I haven't seen anybody be sued yet, but there's some paperwork that you have to do called the chain of custody, okay? If you, pop, let's say, for example, forge anything on that chain of custody, the chain of custody is the legal documentation 
um, that states, hey, this test was taken at this time, at this place, it was done by this collector, you know, these are the individuals verified by their identification, the social security number. If you probably falsify any of that stuff or forge anything, yeah, you could be sued uh, for sure or lose uh, some of your uh, information um, or I'm sorry, lose some of your credibility for sure. Um, if you try to, I don't really see how this can happen. If you try to falsify any other results like forgery or falsify any other results uh, for your own personal gain, yeah, you could be sued for that. I don't know why anybody would do that, but, you know, um, and possibly if you definitely break confidentiality in, in public and, and let, you know, all types of people know who you tested and where, you know, you break confidentiality, absolutely, you could be sued for that. But, you know, like I said, I don't see why anybody would actively try to do that. Uh, but yes, is there an age limit for the parent requesting the test? So, if the parent, if the parent of the child is under the age of 18, uh, they can sign for the child to get the test, but they have to have a guardian over the age of 18 uh, sign on their behalf because they're underage. Okay. Uh, are, so are you asking, um, you know, can the parent be 90 years old and still get a DNA test? Is that what you're asking? I just want to make sure, is there an age limit for the parent requesting the test? So uh, for that, yeah, so if the, you know, they're, can they be under 18? Yeah, they can be under 18, but a guardian has to sign for them, okay? Uh, a guardian has to say, hey, yeah, I approve of this individual getting a paternity test uh, even though they're a parent and they're under the age of 18, they can be parents to be 16 uh, or, you know, 17 years old or so. Um, and they and that parent can sign for their child saying, yeah, I'm, you know, my child, I approve of my child getting this. But there has to be a guardian over the age of 18 to sign for the underage parent. So another good question, Lex. You're asking all the really good questions. Okay, great. So, um, and feel free to ask any other, any other question that you like, by the way. Also, just a disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer. So if you, if you get too you know, legal with the questions outside of my scope, I just want to let you know that I'm not a lawyer or an attorney, family law attorney. All right. So I'd refer you to an attorney. How does the taxation process work? All right. I set aside uh, funds for, for taxing. That depends on how you set your business up. OK, so if you set it up as an LLC, you know, or a S core or a C core, that depends on how you set your business up. I would refer to speaking to a tax attorney or uh, an accountant on that. Everybody's tax taxation process is different, of course, based on your situation or your state or how you incorporated your business. Great questions, though, by the way. These are some really excellent questions. So uh, scaling your, your DNA testing business, you know, once you start your DNA testing business, are you just stuck and beholden to your area? Can, you know, does the government not want you to scale it and get too big? No, you can, you can scale it as far as you want. Okay. So uh, right now, uh, I am mainly focused in uh, the Western Texas area, uh, but you can, you know, expand as far as you want. You can set up different offices. You can hire people. You can fire people. You can have contractors. You can advertise in every single city in the entire country. This, as long as you have the money to do so, you can scale your DNA testing business as much as you want. You can get buildings, you can buy buildings and, and host, you know, have your DNA testing service there. You can franchise your business, you can license out the name of it and let other people use it. They pay you a yearly licensing fee. You can do whatever you want as long as you are, you know, operating in an ethical manner and you keep client confidentiality, you can do whatever you want. There's no stopping you. There's no law that says you can't expand. Um, no, I haven't had any bad experiences with paternity testing. No, I haven't. I've had some weird experiences, like some clients didn't like the results that they got necessarily. 
Um, they weren't really too fond of it, but the science is the science, the laboratory test, the DNA that they provided, um, and they may just not like the results, but I haven't had any bad experiences with it. No, good question. By the way, Lex, I, I appreciate you coming on to this, uh, coming on to this uh, webinar and asking these questions. How did you, uh, how did you hear about the webinar? Was it from my Twitter or Instagram or email list? I'm just curious. Okay. Great. Um, so advertising uh, with your with your DNA testing company, um, you know there, you can get really creative with with advertising. Okay, um, for example, oh, a friend who's taken the course previously. Okay, cool, great. Uh, I'm I'm hoping that friend likes it. Um, I hope it was some good information for them. Great, perfect. Um, so so advertising, um, you can advertise any way you want. There's, there's, like I said, there's no limits on that either. Um, I, I primarily right now advertise on Google ads at the moment. I have a Google ads account and I, I, you know, whenever you look up something on Google, sometimes you see that ad come down on the top. That's how I advertise currently. Um, but guess what? I, I have bandit signs now. I have uh, a bench ads. So on these, you know, on bus stops in the city, you can have advertisements on the bus stops. You can do that. You know, I network with attorneys and doctors. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm also talking about it on my social media. There's no limits to how you advertise. You can do, you know, people used to do um, just in general for advertising, not just specifically for DNA testing. They used to get these like dollar, these fake dollar bills and throw them on the ground somewhere. And people would pick it up thinking it was a dollar bill. And on the back, it would be like, call my, you know, call my company to do something, you know, or buy this, whatever. All right. You, you can do whatever, as long as it's ethical, you know, you can advertise however you want, you know, feel free, you can get creative. Um, you can go speak to uh, uh, hospitals. Let's see, in the event that someone is unhappy with their results, do you ever provide the option of a second testing? And if so, do you charge for them? Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've had, I've had an individual unhappy with their results. And I said, ma'am, you know, you are willing to either A, test with my company again, or B, get another test somewhere else. That's completely fine. Um, and yes, if they want another test, I would charge them the exact same fee uh, if they're unhappy with their results. And 100% and of the time, they just said, okay, fine. <laughs> they were unhappy because they were just unhappy. They knew, they ultimately knew what the results were because they know what happened, okay? But they just didn't want to accept it. But yeah, if somebody wants to test again, absolutely, I would test them again. See, here's the thing. When you do a DNA test, the answers are gonna come in two ways. Like 99.9% of the time, the answer is gonna be, they're either not the father or they're the father, okay? That, that's it. So uh, uh, the only way that a test can be, uh, maybe a uh, not a false positive, but it'll come back inconclusive. The lab will say, hey, this test is inconclusive, meaning that uh, not enough DNA was collected or there was an obstruction or something like somebody had gum or tobacco in their mouth or something like that. That's why you tell them to spit it out. Anything, it will come back inconclusive, meaning I would retest and also meaning that I would not charge them for another test for that if it comes back inconclusive. But it comes back 0%. That means they ran the test, they ran the DNA, they compared the DNA, the DNA markers did not match up with the father or the child, and they're not the father. And it just is what it is. Yeah, so great, another great question, Lex. You're firing off. Great, great questions, honestly. I don't, nobody's actually asked me these questions before. <laughs> some of the client, you know, some of the, the leads have, the clients have. Um, but no, uh, nobody on these webinars are asking. These are these are really good questions. Feel free to ask more. Um, so I know I was talking about. <laughs> I, 
I was talking about uh, uh, advertising. Like I said, you can scale this thing. You know, I have a mentor of mine. You always got to have a business mentor. He makes about forty, fifty thousand dollars a month just just doing DNA testing um, because he he scaled it. He has a really good system, a good process. You have your own system, your own standard operating procedures. You do whatever you want that makes your stuff run more efficient. You know, I've had, I've dealt with uh, DNA testing companies. Uh, you know, that I've tried to, you know, do collections for me. And I'll explain that in a second too. And, you know, I was like, hey, how do you, um, how do you accept payment? You know, if I want to have you collect on my company's behalf for a client that's in a whole different, different state, uh, how, how do you guys want me to pay you? Oh, mail us a check. I'm like, really? Mail you a check? You know, what, what, what year are we in? You know, is it 1975? Um, so they have their own processes, you know, you can have your own thing. So, Lex, I, I want to talk about uh, collections. Anybody else listening as well? DNA collections. What does that mean? And what does that mean also to be a DNA collector versus a DNA agency owner? Okay. So a DNA collector, let me take another sip of water. A, a DNA collector is someone who um, has been trained and has applied to be a collector uh, with a DNA testing laboratory, okay? And they go into the DNA lab system and they kind of sit there. A collector is more uh, passive. They're, they're waiting on a DNA testing agency owner or the laboratory to call them and say, hey, uh, we need a collection done uh, in a week at this area. Um, we'll pay you $25 or something like that to do a collection, okay? That's what they would do. All right. Um, you know, you're waiting for a call. Um, and that's different. So is there any prepping requested by the client or provider? What do you mean? Can you rephrase that question, please? Is there any prepping requested by the client? As in like what the client needs to bring to a test? To, to, a, to an appointment? Is that what you're asking? All right, so uh, a collector is that. They're waiting on a call, all right? They don't really get paid much, all right? They really don't, all right? And if you're waiting on a lab or, or an agency to call you, if you just decide to become a collector, you part, you know, you you sign up to be a collector with a lab and you're waiting on them to call you, you're going to be waiting for months or some some people did it and they waited for years. Uh, should they refrain from before testing? Um, usually we don't like them to eat too much or drink uh, anything other than water, maybe about an hour or 30 minutes prior to the test and nothing in their mouth while we do the swabs, okay? Preferably nothing in their mouth. We don't want any obstructions or anything like that uh, while we're actually doing the test. But other than that, you know, they can exercise or whatever they want to do, but just nothing too much, no, no obstructions or don't eat too much or at least wash your mouth out uh, prior, to the, prior to the test. Good question. Um, so a DNA agency owner is somebody who is, has, has partnered with a DNA lab. A DNA lab are these large labs, I mean, some are smaller too, they actually test the samples, okay? They are accredited by the American Association of Blood Banks, meaning they can provide uh, court admissible paternity testing, and they have millions of dollars of equipment, and they run the samples they, they test the samples and stuff that they do all the sciencey stuff. There's like PhDs and all types of folks over there. Okay. You as a DNA agency owner, you are partnered with that lab. You request to be a distributor or a partner with that lab. You set your own business up. You do your own thing. You're not a franchise. You set your own business up. Uh, and then you price your services, just like how I'm talking about in this webinar. You set your business up, you price your services, you do your research, you get your logo, you name your business, you do all that stuff. And then clients call you, clients call you, not DNA labs call you to do a collection on their behalf. The clients call you, you know, as, the, as you get more popular and noticeable in your city and they ask for a paternity test and you charge them three to 500 bucks for a paternity test. And, you know, you keep the difference. So what is the profits like uh, in a regular DNA testing? So for example, I did uh, two DNA tests uh, today. Physically, I did I did two today, okay, right around noon, all right? Uh, one of them, they paid me earlier uh, this week, and I'm going to actually pull up the actual, the actual numbers, okay? Um, now, I'm, you know, 
taxes, of course, will I'm not going to take that into account. That I'm going to talk about a little bit of gross and net. Okay, so uh, this week um, I was I made I grossed a thousand and twenty dollars uh, basically from from two DNA tests. I think actually three. Correction, three. All right, but let's just talk about the two that I physically did today. I charged uh, $299 plus tax uh, for one uh, DNA test. Uh, so that was $314, okay? And then I charged uh, $399 and turned out to be about $420 for a D another DNA test, uh, all right? So that is $735, all right? That's my gross, all right? That's my gross. That's just my straight income, okay? And then uh, the lab on the back end, when I when they receive the samples, the lab is going to say, "Okay, we got your samples. Now we're going to charge you money to test these samples." Okay, uh, so for one of the tests, the guy had two kids, so the lab charges me one hundred eighty one dollars to run that. All right, uh, so that is about four twenty minus one eighty one. So my profit on that is about two hundred thirty nine dollars. Okay, round it up to two forty, and then for the other test. Uh, where I charge three fifteen, the lab charged me one hundred and twenty six dollars. Okay, uh, so let's add that up. So my total profit for those two tests is four hundred and twenty eight dollars on on or about four hundred twenty eight dollars for a total of thirty minutes of actual like work. Work. Uh, both of those tests only took fifteen minutes. I did not have to sweat. Uh, actually, my wife did one test. I did the other one. I didn't have to sweat or do anything of that nature. All it was was answering the phone, listening to their issue, addressing their problem, sending them the invoice, setting up the appointment, you know, then meeting at the office uh, or the location, swabbing them, doing the paperwork, sending off the samples to the lab. And I essentially profited $428 from a total, maybe even like 28 minutes of work because one test took like 16 minutes. The other one took like, 12 or something. All right. Doesn't take that long to do this. So yeah, you know, hey, $428 profit and for 30 minutes of work doesn't sound too bad to me. I don't know what that sounds, you know, how that sounds to you, Lex. Mm. What has been my best source for promotion? Google, Google, Google for sure. Yeah. So I, in, in the course, I, I teach you how to set up your own Google My Business, uh, which is very important. So, so Lex, you know, whenever you search for something on Google, um, you know, um, hair salon near me, whatever, all right, as an example. It pulls up Google Maps usually, and you see all those little red pins all over the place on Google. That's what I set myself up as. So when somebody searches paternity testing near me or DNA test near me or something like that, I have it set up uh, to where, you know, I am one of the first people they see when, they, when, I, when I pop up on Google Maps. They're some, some, sometimes searching Google Maps or regular Google. It takes time to do that okay you can set up ads to kind of uh you pay for advertising um in google ads to kind of push yourself up a little bit further and you have your google my business profile uh that you have with an office location and i'll show you how to do that as well um to where you pop up you know you have your hours you're open on weekends but the long story short the best source of promotion as of right now has been google when you pop up on google because also not only do the, the clients uh, look for you on Google, uh, but lawyers do too. Family law offices and divorce lawyers Google paternity testing services in the city, and they call the first, like whoever they call, whoever answers the phone is who gets the business. All right, and then also source <coughs> source of promotion is actually networking and making relationships with divorce lawyers because you know they will send you clients. So great question. Like I said, I also bought some bandit signs. You know when you drive alongside the street and you see like, you know, cash for houses or whatever. I bought some of those. I'm going to test it out. I'm going to stick some of those in the ground. You know, uh, don't think the kid is yours. Call this number. Stick it in the ground. It's yellow and black. It's bright and it's shock value. We're going to try out how, how, you know, those calls go. All right. So another good question, Lex. You're on fire right now. You're on fire. Yeah. What other questions do you have before I uh, before I wrap up? Do you have any other any other questions? I don't want to give away too much because uh, it's the rest of it is in the course. <laughs> yeah. 
she's a cult. She's a cult owner. She's a cult owner of the business. But that's another great question. And that's that's like I said, you can choose what you want to do in your business. Consult with the with definitely with an attorney for that one on how you want to do it or with a with a tax accountant. But my wife is the co-owner of the business. Another great question. Lex, are you already a business owner? Because uh, you're, 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 the questions that you're asking are, uh, have you always had a solid location and is that required? Uh, do you mean, I think I, I know what you mean. Do you mean like an actual office space? Have I always had that location? And is that required? If that's what you're asking, um, no, I have not always had an office space. I, I used to primarily do mobile DNA testing. So I would like go to their home, charge them an extra fee or meet them at a central location and do it, you know, test them while they're in their car in a parking lot. You can do that too, by the way. Uh, you're under the business. Okay, got it. Yeah, you don't see it. You're asking some awesome questions. I think you'd be a really good DNA testing agency owner, honestly. Um, so you don't have to have a location. It is, I would say for Google My Business profile purposes, it is preferred for you to have an office address because they prefer, in my experience, trust me, I've experienced it. So when you set up Google My Business and you set up your profile, um, you, when there's two ways to do it. They'll say, do you want to set an address or, or, you know, like a business address or do you want to set your home address and have something called a service area, right? Saying that you, you're a home-based business but you operate in this service area. Google is more partial to, you're welcome. Google is more partial to the business address. Trust me, because I've had it as a service before, as a service address saying that I serve the El Paso area, but it's my home address. But Google is more partial to the, uh, the business address because when people search it, my service address business didn't really pop up that high on Google search. So, you know, little secret, you can get, uh, you can set an account, you can set up an account with the company called Regis, if that's in your city or with a co-working space. Um, and then you can use that address uh, for that. Um, you know, like I said, that's a little secret, but get the course, get into the Slack channel and I will tell you exactly how to do that. All right, that, that definitely makes things a little bit easier for you. Good questions though, good questions. I know. Oh, where can you purchase the course? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. I'll, uh, I'll post it in here. Give me just a second. Um, but you can go to paternityuniversity.com. Um, or let me post the actual link in here. Give me just a second. It's definitely well worth it. You know, uh, you, you know, $97 uh, for a course, you can make your money back psh, triple on your first DNA test. You know, of course, you have to set everything up and do some initial marketing. But if you look at it that way, you, you know, you make your money back multiple times over. I've had multiple students do paternity tests and do just fine. You know, uh, it just depends on what action you take. How actionable are you? Are you a, are you a go getter? You know. And it's it, once you got things kind of set in motion, it's easy. I taught my wife. Uh, oh, really? You have? Oh, my gosh. That's such an honor. Like, seriously, Lex. That really is. I put a lot into that course. And so I'm very happy to hear good things about it, um, even though I've never interacted with you specifically um, on social. But I, I really, really appreciate that. Honestly, that is that is that's humbling. That's an honor. Um. But yeah, there's the link. Uh, and anybody listening, you can go to paternityuniversity.com and you know you you see the description. You can click on that link right there. It takes you to where you can buy the course and, and you can get it. And I think it's a pretty solid investment. This industry isn't going anywhere. It just like mobile notary stuff, it isn't going anywhere. It is not going anywhere. People are always gonna be making babies. Trust me, 
always going to be making babies. People are always going to be having family issues where the father is not there and, you know, the grandparents are there and they want to find out they can try to get custody of the child. And so they need to do a grandparentage paternity test. There's always going to be people trying to find out if they're truly siblings. There's always going to be women who are pregnant who want to determine who the father truly is of their child to make a decision that they want to make and have the right to make. Um, there, this is, it's always going to exist. It depends on how you uh, place yourself in this business. So one, one quick fact or a little bit of, you know, my, my thought and put into it. So I read a study in 2006, there was a study done that there were, uh, I think at the year, about 300,000 paternity tests are done a year. And that was in 2006. So that's 15 years ago. Okay. I think there's more. I think there's more paternity tests done. I think there's about half a million done a year. There's no public data on that, by the way, but let's just say there's half a million paternity tests done a year. Okay. All right. So let's do uh, 500,000. Let's do some quick math, right? 500,000 times 350. That's about the average price of a DNA test, about average. That is $175 million a year is, is for DNA or paternity testing, okay? $175 million a year, okay? Uh, so if you want to make an extra $1,000 a month gross, okay? So $12,000 a year, uh, we would do 12,000 divided by 175 million. Let's do that real quick. So uh, you may not be able to see, let me see, put it in the camera right here. Uh, can you see that number? You just need that percentage right there of all the DNA tests in America to, to make an additional uh, <laughs> $1,000 a month. An additional $1,000 a month is three DNA tests. That's not hard. I did two today. I did three this week, actually. That was $1,000 for me. Okay. <laughs> so once you set everything, it takes some time. It takes some time and you focus on your, on your, on your area. Um, but you know, that's, that's what you want to do. You know, um, if you're serious about this business. So if you're serious about it, get the course, learn everything you can get into the Slack channel. Trust me. I, I have a Slack channel with all the other students and I engage every single day, give them tips. We all give each other tips too. We learn from each other. And you will make your money back. That's a fact, you know? So Lex, do you have any other questions? I'm sure you got some other good ones in, in the tuck. I know you got some good ones. I'm about to go ahead and close it out. That wraps up. Okay, good. Okay, Lex. Well, I look forward to, to seeing you on the other side, Lex, and everybody else that's, that's you know, uh, listening to this webinar in the future. I'm recording it, so it's going to be pushed out to, you know, everybody in email, on YouTube, social media, all that stuff. Um, it's a good business to get into. It ain't going nowhere. And uh, you're welcome. You're welcome so much, Lex. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And until next time, I'm going to hold another webinar, and I hope to see a lot more folks on it, Okay. So thank everybody so much. Lex, thank you so much. And you have a good night. All right.